Good morning. Please stand if you would. Let's pray together. Our Father, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this new day. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would enlighten our minds, open our hearts to receive your grace this day. Lord Jesus, would you be the one to open the scriptures for us, be known to us all in the breaking of the bread. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you know that we are set in the midst of many grave dangers. And because of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant that your strength and protection may support us in all dangers and carry us through every temptation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, beginning with the 15th verse. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak any word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm chapter 111, beginning with the first verse. Please read responsibly by a whole verse. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who have pleasure in them. His work is worthy to be praised and held in honor, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his marvelous works to be had in remembrance. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him, he shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who live accordingly. His praise endures forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, beginning with the first verse. Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge. But some, through former associations with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. 
Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. The word of the Lord. Kids who are headed out to wow worship, come on up. One's missing. Oh, here she comes. Good morning. How's it going? Same as last week? Good. I know that probably sounds boring at your age, but that's actually a good thing. Let's pray together for our kids. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, keep watch over our children in this unsteady and confusing world. Mercifully care for them and teach them that your ways give abundant life and give them strength to stand firm in Christ Jesus, our Lord, so that they might never know a day apart from you, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And take off. synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, 
what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing you, we may also obey your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated if you would. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know, as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. From St. Paul in today's second lesson. I'll begin this morning with a confession. I was, for a time, just the very most annoying type of theology student, which is to say I became a know-it-all after about two semesters. You start reading philosophy and systematic theology and suddenly you think it's your job to correct everyone's faith. And for a short while, I emphasize to be fair to myself, for a short while I fit that bill. It makes my skin crawl when I think about it. Incidentally, this is part of the reason why bishops normally wait until after someone is all the way through seminary before ordaining them. Because by the time you actually finish, after the gazillion books and papers and wrestling with all these giant thoughts, by the time you make it that far, that's when you actually begin to understand just how much you don't know. St. Paul is right. Knowledge puffs up. I doubt that I'm alone in this, though, right? We've all heard it said that a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. And most of us have probably been at some point that dangerous thing, walking out, around out there in the world with a little bit of knowledge about one thing or another. And the church in Corinth, to whom Paul is writing in today's lesson, there are some know-it-alls wreaking havoc amidst the congregation. There was an issue, I'm sure you caught it in that reading, there was an issue about certain kinds of food, which some folks found scandalous and others had no problem with. But the folks who were scandalized were being put down by the so-called knowledgeable crowd. The best thing to compare this to for our times is drinking alcohol, right? There are Christians who completely abstain from drinking alcohol for a number of of reasons, to which many Anglicans typically respond with, God bless you, more for us. <laughs> Sometimes the teetotal crowd will raise an eyebrow at us or give us the, and let's be honest, we can be pretty snotty about our stance too. And all of this over something which is ultimately non-essential. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with in that lesson from Paul's letter. See, we've all, we, we've all got reasons for doing certain things or not doing certain things, but we're all apt to lord our own stance over other people. And you can apply that to everything, from alcohol to purchasing habits to political parties, everything. Knowledge without wisdom can easily divide. 
Paul says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. In other words, love is more important than knowing everything. Love is more important than winning the argument. Love is more important than always feeling that we're right. But this isn't as simple as me just saying to you, so let's all just try harder to be more loving with others. Obviously, we should do that. We should try harder to love others. But just as obviously, we will do that imperfectly. We're going to fail in our attempts at always loving others. Which is why even more than knowledge, more than knowing every available fact, or being up to date on every possible news story, or knowing exactly what makes so-and-so tick, and that's why so-and-so doesn't get along with such-and-such, so much more important than knowing those things, we need wisdom. Godly wisdom. The patience and faith and compassion to use the things we know in the service of love. Which begs the question, how? In a culture, a culture that's both in the church and outside it, a culture that prizes opinion and volume and domination. How do we acquire wisdom? The answer was up there, clear as day. It was from the church's oldest prayer book, the book of Psalms. The appointed psalm for today is 111. And verse 10 of that psalm says very clearly, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of of wisdom. Now the use of that word fear, we got to clear this up. That does not mean we're supposed to flinch at every turn of life, worrying that God's going to smite us the second we mess up. That word is more about awe and reverence. Think of Moses taking off his shoes before the burning bush. That's what we're talking about. St. Augustine translated this verse better than anyone. I'm kind of bummed that it's not translated this way in our prayer book. But anyway, this is how he translated the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He wrote it like this. The worship of God is the wisdom of man. The worship of God is the wisdom of man. The wisest thing to which we can surrender ourselves is the worship of of God Almighty. Not as an idea or in an abstract sense, either. Remember, St. Augustine, the guy who translated this phrase, he was a monk, which meant he spent the better part of every day in prayer. Every single one of his days was shaped by the celebration of Holy Communion. Which means that when St. Augustine writes about worship, when he uses that word worship, he means exactly the kind of worship that you find yourself immersed in right now. Think for a moment about the shape of Christian worship, what we do when we're here, what happens. We bow, we kneel, we sit under the hearing of Scripture. We affirm a faith together in the creed, a faith that is impossible for us to fully wrap our heads around. We confess our faults and our failings. We receive forgiveness that we can't secure on our own all by ourselves. We lift up our worries and concerns along with our time, our resources, our hearts, bread and wine. Then we hear the true gospel story again in the communion prayers. Namely that God made us for himself. He made us for love. We rebelled. He came among us as one of us, died for us, rose for us, and made a promise the night before he went to the cross. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. He dwells in us and we dwell in him. In this what we're doing right now in this act 
of offering up all that we are and all that we have to God in Christ each week, our Eucharist. We are transformed by the encounter of His love, even sometimes when we're not aware of it. We see ourselves here as we are and not as our egos would have us believe. We are all, from brand new baby to accomplished PhD, equally broken, beautiful, and redeemed in Christ Jesus. And we are all one in Him. Sometime after seminary, once we'd both been in full-time ministry for a good number of years, I met up with one of my best friends from back in seminary days. And we found ourselves commiserating about how we'd both been know-it-alls. I remember him saying to me, we thought we had it all figured out, didn't we? We're going to solve the world's problems. I remember him telling me, I went back and read an old paper that I wrote and I just cringed at how self-righteous I was. And then he said something to me that has stuck with me ever since. He said something like, you know, nowadays I feel in my spirit more the way I did as a kid in church. My faith is a lot simpler now that I'm a pastor. There's a lot of stuff I just don't know. And my heart is okay with that because Jesus can be trusted. And I have to agree. And I also have a hunch that what turned my friend and I into recovering know-it-alls was simply the gift of learning that all the theological knowledge in the world is useless without love. It's useless without receiving and sharing the love of Christ in community. And we receive and share that love primarily here, among real lives, with problems and hopes and questions just as real as our own. All of it offered up to Christ and answered every week with his own life poured out for us. The worship of God is the wisdom of man. Here we learn over and over again that all our knowledge pales in comparison to the mystery that confronts us in Jesus. Here we learn the way of grace, the way of mercy, the way of love, because here the way, the truth, and the life meets us right where we are, exactly as we are, without fail. The God who made all things chose to use his power to become lowly, to become vulnerable like us, to become ordinary in the best sense of that word. He chose to lay down his life, which even death couldn't hold, for the love of all people, for the life of this world. He who knows all, who has all knowledge, God Almighty, he who knows all prefers above all things to know you and to know me. We cannot fathom the depth of this love, but we can receive it. We can encounter him and we can share his love with others by the means of his grace. And in the end, nothing matters more than that. I pray that today you and I might truly encounter and know the Lord Jesus in our worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's stand together. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the incarnate of from... We changed the creed a little bit to match the prayer book. Anna 1, Anna 2, Anna 1, 2, 3 was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Mark, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our president, our governor, and our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. You are invited to add your prayers, either silently or aloud. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let's stand together. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another mystically. Have a seat, folks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to those in the room. Welcome to those camera A, camera B, camera C. Welcome to those joining online as well. Glad to have you with us. There are a number of announcements in your leaflet. I would encourage you uh, to read all of them. I'll draw your attention to just one. Uh, For anybody who wasn't able to come in person to annual meeting, Uh, There are new printed directories and the actual printed annual report out there available. So I'd encourage you to pick those up, A, so you can stay in touch with people uh, inside the church, and B, so you can see what, for me, at least in my years of ministry, is the grooviest looking annual report I've ever seen. In every other parish I've ever served, the annual report was a stack of white printer paper with a, like a, a staple in the corner, just black and white. Uh, Jennifer does a great job of telling the story of a year in our annual report. Uh, So I'd encourage you to pick one up and look through it. The other thing I do want to draw your attention to, which is not in here, but it will be in circulation starting this week. Go ahead and mark your calendars because Lent begins fairly early this year. Ash Wednesday is Wednesday, obviously, February 17th. There'll be two services that day, 12.15 and 6 p.m. And how to impose ashes on everybody's forehead during a pandemic. Um, I'm working on it. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure out a safe way to do this. Um, just put it in the stick. Well, I wondered about just throwing <laughs> ashes like that, and then I decided against it. So we're going <laughs> to... We'll figure out something much more reverent and much more safe, I promise. Uh, But go ahead and mark your calendars for that. Finally, a word about Holy Communion. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion here at Trinity Church. If you don't wish to receive, don't let that keep you in your seat. Come forward anyway. Just cross your arms over your chest like so, and that'll be my signal to pray a blessing over you instead. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, And bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. 
We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.